Hi everyone, it's me Blanche. Welcome to Feast in the Middle East. And guess where I am right now? Would you believe I'm back in Ramallah in Palestine? There's the Ramallah municipality behind me with the fountain. I'm staying at the Royal Court Hotel and I am super excited because I have so much to share with you. Uh, I really got great feedback from my previous videos on Palestinian culture. So I thought I'd share with you some more. Just stuff that you're not gonna see on any other mainstream media news outlet. That's always what I wanted to do was to sort of give a voice to the voiceless. You know, just any culture out there that just doesn't really have much of a voice, I wanna bring it to you because that's what I used to do as a journalist. So it's kind of fun to tap into that and bring that over to you via YouTube. So stay tuned guys, I've got way more to come. Today we head out to Nablus, originally a Canaanite city that was important in ancient Palestine. While Nablus has a bustling commercial center and stock exchange, we're going to explore the quieter side in the outskirts to check out the annual olive harvest. This 2,000 year old city lies hidden in the mountains in the northern part of the West Bank. We were welcomed by a sweet Palestinian family with their goats, chickens, and donkeys in the picturesque mountains of Nusijbil. This is Shalhoub. Abu Hanna, tawur is Shalhoub. Uh -huh. This is Shalhoub, and he's like my new donkey friend. Isn't he sweet? He's yeah. so sweet. He's my little Palestinian donkey. Where? I'm getting back to my roots. <laughs> I just need the camel. <laughs> My dear friend hosted us at his home with true Palestinian hospitality, surprising us with a farm-to-table breakfast. Fresh olives and fruity olive oil from the groves, soft goat cheese and tangy spreadable Lebanon cheese from the goats, sweet tomatoes from the garden, and organic eggs cooked in olive oil from the chickens at the farm. The yolks were so orange and the taste so rich they didn't even require any salt. And look at those massive rounds of Mena'ish Ma'zatar, or fresh baked bread baked with za'atar spice and loads of olive oil. They were perfect to sop everything up. I had to meet the women that baked these chewy loaves of goodness. Okay, so we had that beautiful bread from the taboon or the clay oven earlier for breakfast today. And this lovely woman who actually made it for us is going to show us where she actually makes the bread. So it's right here. Okay, so she's a Oh. Uh, so she uh. just puts it, she she does the dough and she puts it inside the oven and she waits and checks on it. It's really hot in here. I mean the whole room is an oven basically. Uh. So a lot of the dishes that I taught you guys how to make, she does them all and she puts them in that clay oven and it makes it taste a thousand times better. I wish I could have one of those in my house, but it'll probably be a, a serious fire hazard. It's nice that she has it here, and it's a really uh, great little house here. They were playing Arabic music as they were harvesting the olives. So I'm gonna show you a little flavor of what an olive harvest looks like in Palestine. <laughs> <laughs> These beautiful women, they're all sisters-in-law, and they came out here for the once-a-year olive harvest. And you have to understand, these trees are like a member of the family. They're very old trees. They make the most incredible olive oil, and each olive is lovingly picked by these women and men. They get together, they have picnics out in the, outside in the beautiful area with all the trees. And it's just beautiful. Right now, I'm, I'm not helping them substantially with the olive harvest. But it is, it is a lot of work. I mean, here, look at these beautiful olives. It is a lot of work, but they make it fun, you know, they make it a family affair, they hang out together, they play music, they make food together, and it becomes a big thing that they look forward to once a year. And so when you buy Palestinian olive oil, you're not just buying just oil, you're buying the labor of beautiful women like this that have been working for days to make this into the bottles. So I highly recommend always support Palestinian olive oil. This is a beautiful art 
and you add the olive oil to any of your food and it'll enhance it in ways you never imagined. Especially your hummus, uh, all of the recipes that I practice in my YouTube channel, just add Palestinian olive oil for that extra authentic touch. This is so special to me because this is the very first time I've ever seen an olive harvest in action. And uh, I think I'm gonna remember this day for the rest of my life. I'm pretty emotional right now, just, <laughs> just being with these women and feeling the love that they have for the land, for the trees, and for each other. Nablus has some of the oldest olive groves in the world, some dating as far back as 1,500 to 2,000 years. Palestinians produce 15,000 to 30,000 tons of olive oil a year, providing for 70,000 families. They've also been making olive oil soap, which is a 1,000-year-old tradition. Palestinians used to sell their olive oil to Israelis. However, after the wall was built around the West Bank, the Israeli market has been closed off, the cost of transporting goods has increased, and the complex system the system of checkpoints and roadblocks has separated suppliers from producers and workers from their workplaces. This has caused hundreds of million dollars of losses each year. To compound the challenges, Israeli authorities and settlers have destroyed over 800,000 Palestinian olive trees since 1967. However, you can help keep this tradition alive by buying Palestinian olive oil. And I'll provide some links for more information in the description box below. You can also help grow more olive trees in Palestine. The organization called Zaytun supports an olive tree planting project run by the Palestinian Fair Trade Association. A small contribution of $25 or 20 pounds pays for five tree saplings. For more information, go to zaytun.org slash plant a tree. After a fun olive picking afternoon, for some reason, my sweet tooth was screaming for attention. But no better place for this to happen than in Nablus at Ajri Sweets. So I've talked about Kanafa many times on my channel, as you've seen, but this is the exact birthplace of Kanafa. It's in Nablus, and I've never had Kanafa in Nablus before. So I'm incredibly excited to be here with all these sweets, guys. I'm gonna show you close-ups of the sweets, and then we're gonna dig into the Kanafa. Nablus is known worldwide for its kanafa and other sweets the way Italians are known for their pasta or the Japanese are known for their ramen. Now to further cement their place on the dessert map, Nabulsi Bakers in 2009 broke the record for making the largest kanafa, weighing about 3,000 pounds. Now for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, kanafa is dessert made with sweet melted cheese topped with shredded buttery filo dough and drenched in sweet syrup. I'm going to give you guys all a virtual bite. For me, this is my pizza. You know, some people obsess about pizza. I obsess about kanafa. Okay, there's something about kanafa that makes me giddy with excitement. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> this is heaven on earth. This is the birthplace of kanafa, Nablus, Palestine. Come here, immediately. I'm gonna enjoy my moment right now. <laughs> Where is it? There we go. It's gonna be gone in about five minutes. On to one of the most important holy sites in the world called Jacob's Well, which is also in Nablus. Now, Jacob's Well is the most authentic site in the Holy Land, since no one can move a well that was originally more than 40 meters deep. Now, you have to enter the church of St. Fotina to access Jacob's Well. The Bible relays the story of this well in John chapter 4, when Jesus asked a Samaritan woman for a drink and offered her living water. The present church, completed in 2007, has been under the care of Archimedrite Iostinos, a 77-year-old Greek Orthodox priest since 1980. Now before him, the guardian of the church was a priest named Archimedrite Philominos, who was attacked and killed with an axe by an Israeli citizen named Rabi. Now Rabi came back to kill Father Iostinos, but fortunately he managed to escape and he still manages the church today. He bravely said he will care for this well and the church as long as God grants him the permission to do so. You know, there was so much going on in Nablus, I forgot to talk to you about the shawarma in Ramallah. Oh, well, there's always the next episode where I'll also give you a peek at the Palestinian town of Hebron as well. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so you get notified when I upload new videos.